There's, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's some fish down there. Nature moment. Fish intro. Look at, there's some fish over here too. Hopefully the camera picks it up. Getting distracted in typical Alexia style by the fish down there. I came over here to do my intro. Okay, focus Alexia, that's not what you're here for. You're not here to look at fish on the other side of the rail here. Today I am here at the Santa Barbara Harbor and I am recording video two of our things to do in Santa Barbara, California. And today I'm gonna take you through a tour of the Maritime Museum. And I am lucky enough that my husband, Travis, used to be a donor, a donor or a volunteer at the Maritime Museum. And so he can take us through and give us some good information through there. And also, we'll just walk around the harbor and look at restaurants and I'll show you some other things to do here. Come with me. And it's a beautiful day here in Santa Barbara. The sun's out. The, we had a hurricane come through. Not really here in Santa Barbara, but in the area where I live, uh, you know, rain, tropical rainstorms. Not even, I wouldn't really even really call it tropical rainstorm. I'd probably call it more just like sprinkles came through. But anyways, considering we had a hurricane come through Southern California, it looks beautiful here at the harbor today. There's the sign for a little toot. If you go back into my videos over Fiesta, you will have seen that we took a trip on Little Toot and it takes you through the harbor and you take a look at all of the boats through the harbor and it takes you over to Stern's Wharf and drops you off. And then uh, when you're here at the harbor, you can get on Sunset Kid. You can pay to go on the boat. I've been on it, it's really fun. It just kind of takes you out of the harbor and along the coastline. And when you get to Harbor, the Maritime Museum is in this building. It's hard to miss, but it says right there, see Santa Barbara Maritime Museum, and that's where we're headed today. And here we go, we're entering the Maritime Museum. Hello. Hello. So um, basically when you come into the Maritime Museum, it show, you look at different types of boats in here. And um, the first one you come across is a turmoil bo boat. So if you remember from my wildlife cruise video, we visited Santa Cruz Island and Anacapa Island. And in that video, I believe it showed um, there was a spot where driftwood would float up to. And Santa Cruz Island um, was a spot where the Chumash would collect driftwood, often redwood, and um, use that to build these, I believe that they're called tumul boats. But basically this was their canoe style boats that they would travel across to islands and back in. And um, so they used a mix of redwood and then they have an exhibit over here with the natural oil seepage that we have off of our coast and basically the Chumash would use this oil and tar for many different purposes and one of the purposes from what I have learned 
is to make the boats more waterproof. And it worked really well. And they have a smaller, a much smaller exhibit of this, this glass case of this boat. And then there's, there's a picture of what it may have looked like back in the day off of our coast in the boat. So we have Travis here. And Travis, what did you used to do here at the Maritime Museum? Uh, I did an internship here like 20 years ago. So 20 years ago. Okay. Some's changed, but I do know. Changed, but I'm sure there's some the same. Some the same. This is a little bit different area here. This used to be all over back over there. But uh, these are different dive masks that were used by uh, Kirby Morgan, who was a big time uh, deep sea diver here in the Santa Barbara Channel. Uh, most of the deep sea diving oceaneering was done by the Kirby Morgan Company, uh, which is, and you can see here all the different masks, experimental masks, like this one right here from 1975, 1966 right here, this, and then uh, the rat hat here, circa 1970, and then, uh, you know, obviously famous for uh, some sea urchin diving, abalone diving. Uh, back in the day, the abalone part, not so much abalone anymore, but the urchin. So you, that's on the top row, on the left is the abalones, and the right the sea urchin mask. And then uh, we do have a lot of, especially in the past, a lot of oil rigs here in the, in the Santa Barbara Channel. And so those channels, you know, all these oil rig, rigs always need work. And so there's a big crew, crews working and uh, experimental diving taking place here in the Santa Barbara Channel. Islands. So here we have a new uh, display here of the Castagnola family, uh, one time fishermen. They still have boats operating today for uh, tugboats operating back and forth to the pier, to the, to the oil rigs. Uh, but here we have them where they're fishing, the Castagnola family. Uh, you got different basking shark knives and different hooks, swordfish. So a lot of the swordfish and stuff has been gone for a while, but they actually have come back recently in the last couple weeks with, with the warmer weather coming in, the warmer water, excuse me, from the south, so people have been catching tuna out here. Um, they also had, there used to be a cannery area down down by the pier that they used to do all the uh, lobster and different different types of fishing um, canning, that's what I was looking for, but, and also Santa Barbara Channel is well known for its lobster and there's lobster traps throughout the harbor or the, the channel up and down the coast. So this is a Mussolini cup that was awarded uh, in Santa Barbara in 1931 from the dictator himself Benito Mussolini of Italy. Uh, when they had yacht races he was giving out trophies to everybody to make himself famous to help you know lead Italy in the wrong direction. <laughs> And then uh, some other awards too. And pictures of the sailing with the beautiful Santa Barbara coast in the background. So here's some more uh, dive helmets, you know, for innovations in commercial diving. Uh, diving goes back to the, trace back to the 1830s, but in the 1960s it became big here off of Santa Barbara with all the oil rig development and uh, all the repairs that need to be done in the industry. And again, Bob Kirby. Travis is gonna try his hand at sports fishing. Is it, it's a simulator? It's a sports fishing simulator. So he'll, he got the, the fishing hook and the line and then you pull it and I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Got something. Sí.
We've got uh, pictures of the Parisma, which was a deep diving bell that took divers down to depths that they back then could normally go down um, on the oil rigs so they can get their work done. And here's a dissection um, image or exhibit of what it would look like inside the Parisma. And that must be the oxygen system right there and weight boots. So some of the history of that we celebrate Fiesta is uh, was written in the book by Henry Richard Henry Dana, who uh, was a educated man that came out and sailed in the West and did hunting for whales and 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 furs pelts, but most of the sailors that were on these boats that were were from Hawaii. So Hawaiians actually worked in this trade for a long time in the Santa Barbara Channel, back and forth from Hawaii into Europe with the trade of the pelts across the country. And then here we have uh, 19th century shore whaling technology as obviously we used to hold the gun for the whaling, they would shoot off into the water, uh, into the whale. We had used whale oil for our lights to, to light up the, our lamps. Here's what a typical boat, the pilgrim here that Richard uh, Henry Dana Jr. came by, that's the town of Dana Point is named after Richard Henry. He also talked about in his boat uh, before the mast about the Santa Barbara Fiesta and the, and the wedding that we now celebrate as Fiesta. But here's a typical boat here inside the ballast with all the rocks to keep it level and you pull the rocks out. Today in modern ships we use water in the ballast. Uh, but then here you have the different pelts at different levels of different types of pelts and your supplies. This is the uh, Point Conception Lighthouse, uh, light beacon I should say, uh, that was in there at one time. See the glass? I don't, I'd have to look at who the actual manufacturing company of, of it is. But this is uh, in the past, you know, point conception, foggy, rough seas, rocky, keep people, keep ships away from uh, running aground. In the past history, there are multiple ships that ran aground, even a steamboat. Down below, there are some uh, displays of the ships that have run aground and some of the artifacts that have been recovered from. And here is a down below view of the light house bulb. Right light bulb, light house bulb. Some of the, here are some of the boats that Travis was talking about that ran aground off of our coast. Some pictures. It's a prisonal lens from Point Loma. The glass. Well, it is magnificent. I might do this. Oh, I have a good Navigational equipment. And this is the information about the Santa Barbara Lighthouse. And basically it is still here, but the Coast Guard uh, has it. And it's locked behind gates. Um, but yeah, interesting information about it. Amelia is having fun on something. This must be a submarine simulator. What are you looking at, Amelia? Why, why don't you just take a look for yourself? Okay, well, I mean, I, I, the viewers can't take a look. Tell them what you're looking at. She's looking at the ocean through this. It's actually what's happening outside. Submarine. Oh, you can see outside. Oh, that's cool. It's a periscope. Periscope. Be like a Come here and try it out for yourself.
So, so here we have a display of the tragedy at Honda. It's uh, out in the Santa Barbara Channel where multiple U.S. Navy ships in 1923 as destroyer Squadron 11, consisting of 14 uh, Clemson-class destroyers headed to San Diego from San Francisco, ran aground in the Santa Barbara Channel. As you can see here in this right picture, you can see the multiple ships up, up on the rocks uh, right there. And, uh, you know, so basically a disaster. There was a story written, a book written about it by somebody that was on board. And uh, one of the Navy's, U.S. Navy's worst uh, tragedies. Here we have uh, the Munger Theater here that was donated by Mr. Munger, who is the, uh, one of the partners of Berkshire Hathaway. And uh, he donated this theater here that's inside. Currently it's being still used as an art display for photography by Dan Merkel, but also it does have a theater here where they play movies about maritime. So here we have displays of ranching from uh, Santa Cruz Island before it was a national park. Uh, the islands, people lived on the islands and did ranching, uh, cattle and brought them back uh, you know, to the mainland, but they raised the cattle out there and family, the, the, I believe the Stanton family uh, was on Sa Santa Cruz Island. But for many years people have been over there, the Vickers. They used to move their cattle from ships onto the island like that. And just some more of their ranch gear. Family history and... This is Herbert Lester in 1938 on his, hanging out on his mantle at his house on San Miguel Island. And this is a model of the Maritime Museum's boat, the Ranger, that is actually outside. I've shown you this boat before um, on one of my Fiesta videos. And um, this belongs to the Maritime Museum, and they did crab fishing with it. Lobster? Sport fishing with this boat. Tuna. Tuna and stuff like that. So anyways, that's the... That's our quick tour of this museum. It's here in Santa Barbara at the Santa Barbara Harbor if you want to come see it. And I recommend you, everybody seeing it at least once so they know the wonderful history of the Santa Barbara Maritime. And we're going to go to the top. You can take an elevator to the top and get a beautiful view of the harbor while you're up there. What I love about up here is the beautiful murals they have up here and the paintings. And as you can see, you can step outside here and you can get a beautiful view of our Santa Barbara Harbor up here. Hey Travis, you want to add anything before we're done here? Uh, I'm going to say this, this uh, facility, the business where the Maritime Museum, this outlook here, and the restaurant, I believe the Amber Rose, is all, uh, was once parts of a naval reserve, a uh, little base I guess, or whatever you want to call it, little station. And then uh, it was donated to the city of Santa Barbara, and the city of Santa Barbara rents it out, the Maritime Museum, for a dollar. And then I'm not sure what the restaurant, you know, rates are, but this is all part of the Ventura Harbor now, managed by the...
lots of nature moments here. Okay, we're just taking a break on the catches up here now and um, next we are going to go and we're going to walk around the harbor and show you some beautiful views and um, maybe walk through some shops and maybe even grab a bite to eat here. That pole, the pole sticking out of the roof is the top of that periscope Amelia was playing on. Beautiful views. And I, and I just realized, and I've been living here all my life, and I look at it when I walk by, but here's the Prisma that you looked at inside the Maritime Museum on display outside of the Maritime Museum. If you guys get hungry out here, there's the Anchor Rose. It's a newer restaurant, but you get to dine up above and with all the beautiful views. And the menu looked pretty good. It's like seafood and chicken and stuff like that. And like I said before, if you were looking at my Fiesta um, video, Brophy Brothers is a local favorite here in Santa Barbara. People come to Brophy Brothers for the clam chowder and um, other seafood. Even if you don't end up doing anything here at the harbor, it's always nice to just come down to the harbor because it's a pretty, it's not like a strenuous walk, but it's a pretty relaxing walk down to the end of the sand spit and back. When you're here at the harbor, you'll see this boy on a seahorse statue. And this statue is actually a gift from our sister city of Puerto Vallarta. That's a really great contribution to our city and really fun to look at. And it's been here for a long time. It's a pretty beautiful day outside to be walking through here. The water almost looks tropical but I know the water is a lot warmer right now. Windsurfing's been a popular sport in Santa Barbara for as long as I remember. And now I would imagine they also have lots of kite surfing off of here too. And sometimes as you're walking along here, you can get waves crashing over the edge of the wall. But right now, nothing. Of course, well, I have it on camera. It's not doing that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Last time I didn't walk you down to the end, but this time I will. There are some of our oil rigs off of the coast. I don't know if they're in service though. It's coming. I see the wave coming. Give it a minute. on the very other side against the rail <laughs> because uh, the waves are crashing up pretty well over here. You got the rail right here if too much water comes over. It's following us. <laughs> Mm 
you got to be careful walking down this way and you can kind of tell where the water hits and where the water doesn't hit but yeah there's a chance that you can get wet and be splashed out here walking some more of the harbor and the sand spit spot and there there's the water splashing again and we just have a little bit further to walk down and then we're at the end and you can walk across that sp sand spit area but uh I wouldn't right now. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. <laughs> and you can kind of hear the waves as they're coming. You can hear the rumble and know it's on its way. And just pray you're in a spot that doesn't get you wet. Believe it or not, this is a surf spot right here. I've never personally surfed over here because I feel like it's a little too sketchy to catch waves out at the end of the sand spit here where the harbor is and right where the open ocean is over there, but uh, especially with all the rocks right here. But you know, people do it and oftentimes there's some pretty good waves. Yeah, there's waves coming in. great place to take pictures too with the beautiful harbor and the ocean behind you. I'd say walking down to the end of the breakwater and back is just such a relaxing and uh, kind of just like a healing feeling being near the ocean and near nature, especially after um, the last couple of days with our 5.0 earthquake near us. And, and then, I mean, it wasn't much of a hurricane, but still it helps you release stress. It's such a beautiful walk. There's the ranger boat that we were talking about that was owned by the Maritime Museum right here in the harbor. Well, that about wraps up my day here at the harbor. We didn't end up getting anything to eat and I think we're just gonna take Amelia to get ice cream at the Breakwater Cafe. Um, but I hope you had fun looking through the Maritime Museum with me and walking down to the sand spit with me. It's one of the things that I really enjoy doing when I'm here in Santa Barbara and when I was living here. Um, so yeah, so I encourage you to come out to the harbor. There's other things you can do. You can rent kayaks, you can go on Little Toot. I think I've shown you, I showed you in another, one of my Fiesta videos, I went on Little Toot. And you can rent sailboats. There's all kinds of things for you to come down and do when you're here at the harbor and some great restaurants. Thank you so very much for watching. And um, I appreciate each and every one of my viewers. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more of my videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you can be notified for when my new videos come out. I appreciate likes on my videos and comments 
Let me know if there's anything you want to see here in Santa Barbara or just anything you want me to cover in general on my uh, videos. And um, like I said before, I enjoy constructive criticism if you have any comments about my videos to me. And um, yeah, thank you so very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. And Amelia got ice cream and she's standing by the ice cream sign here at the Breakwater Cafe, here by the harbor. What kind of ice cream did you get, Amelia? Mint chocolate chip. Chocolate chip, is it good? Mint chocolate chip. Mint chocolate chip, is it good? Yes. Yes. It's, it was one of my favorite things to do as a kid, and, and now, as you can see, my child is enjoying the ice cream as well. If you want ice cream and you're by the harbor, come by the Breakwater Cafe to get some.